I used to have a lot of drama in the way I interacted with certain people or in certain situations. It could just be, you know, dealing with a problem on my computer. You know, for, for, uh, for many years, when I was frustrated with something on my computer, I, all this drama, and I would call up tech support, you know, call up the, the computer company and, and, and uh, be unkind to the tech support people, just create all this drama, all this chaos. Um, and so my suggestion is that when I start forgiving, and I notice this in my own life, that means I can no longer, you know, call up tech support and be a dick, you know, be unkind, you know, be a victim and try to make somebody wrong for how I'm feeling. The problem is when we experience drama, we release chemicals in our body, adrenaline, cortisol, you know, these hormones, these, these, um, neurotransmitters get released in response to our perception of the drama, a perception of we have to defend ourselves, we have to fight. It's the fight or flight response. Those chemicals create reactions in our body and we become addicted to that. It's like a drug addiction. It's like any other addiction. We get addicted to feeling that hit of adrenaline, that, that, that chemical neurotransmitter response to how could you treat me this way? How could you do this to me? And when we stop reacting that way, we have a literally can have a craving without even being aware of it, having a craving in our body where the body is actually calling out for another hit. Give me another hit of that feeling like a victim. Give me another dose of adrenaline. You know, it, again, it could be subtle. Maybe it's not so subtle, but I've noticed this in myself and I have to be aware of that. So that addiction can pull me back to, to forget about forgiveness. I'm not going to forgive you because you're doing this to me and now I'm justified. But the reason I feel that way is because of this addiction to the reaction, the, the, the chemical reactions in the body from feeling victimized, unfairly treated, all of that. Next is what I was talking about earlier, uh, the loss of our sense of identity. So again, the example I use in the book is if, you know, if I've related to somebody for 40 years with anger and judgment and control and manipulation, when I forgive them, see, this is part of, this is why forgiveness is a radical way to live. It means letting go of all of that stuff. I'm no longer judging them. I'm no longer making them wrong. Uh, I'm no longer interacting with them through anger or control or whatever it is. I have to find a new way. And I have a sense of identity. You know, if, if, if I'm no longer that angry guy or that judgmental person, who am I? And it could be specific relationships with specific people, specific situations, or just my life in general. Who would I be without my anger? Who would I be without judgment? Who would I be without, you know, trying to control people or manipulate people or feeling like a victim? When I let all of that go during the process of forgiveness, because remember, forgiveness means I'm no longer going to make you wrong. I'm no longer going to judge you. I'm not going to attack you. I'm not going to act with justified anger, revenge, and all of that. I still take care of myself. I still set boundaries. I can still use force if necessary. But as much as possible, I'm doing that from a place of love, compassion, understanding, rather than anger, victimization, attack, revenge, and all of that. So who would I be if I'm not that guy anymore? Who am I? All right. And it's that lack of that sense of identity is very threatening to the ego. So the whole point is it's very easy to slip back into the old ways. Forget about forgiveness. I'm justified in attacking you because of what you did to me. We lose that sense of who we are and it can be frightening, certainly uncomfortable. So it's very easy to slip back into those old patterns.